Hi there, this is uh, Dr. Anthony Chow, um, assistant professor at the uh, UNC uh, Greensboro, uh, University, University of North Carolina at Greensboro, and along with me is Tim. Tim this hello? is Tim Bucknell, I'm assistant dean of libraries for electronic resources and information technologies at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Uh, the title of our presentation is Usability Engineering and Technology Integration in Libraries. Today's uh, presentation, um, we're going to be talking about usability engineering and technology integration, the role of academic libraries in society, an actual application at Jackson Library, which is the um, academic uh, uh, university library, and the overall implications of our initial findings. Usability Engineering and Technology Integration. The concept of usability engineering is designing systems uh, for maximum utility and ease of use. Uh, utility uh, defined as uh, what users want or find useful and ease of use, um, even if they do find it relevant and useful, whether they uh, can actually use it uh, relatively efficiently, effective, effectively with uh, a moderate level of satisfaction. So therefore, technology integration um, is the design, implementation, and re overall refinement of technology in meeting these needs um, for both uh, the organization and its users. Now, the role of academic libraries within society hasn't really changed substantially over the past few years in terms of our mission. We, sh we still need to support the intellectual and academic needs of our student, faculty, and researchers. Uh, we just have new ways of doing that. And our service population isn't always aware of that. To them, there are a large number of electronic and online resources out there that may or may not have a lot to do with the library. So we need to become part of that information environment for our users, and we need to find new ways to do that. The entire academic and library, like everything involving information technology, uh, is really in transition. Uh, it's a, a really rapidly moving field, and we need to constantly be re envisioning ourselves, reinventing what we do, and finding new ways to provide service to our users. So, our core values, the things that we do, getting information to people, preserving information for future generations, all that stuff hasn't changed. But we need to find new ways to do that. And so we need to get all of our ideas together um, through uh, a strategic planning process where uh, we gather ideas and set goals and then uh, establish a strategic plan. And the difficulty there is that uh, information technology changes so rapidly by the time you've developed a thoughtful, detailed plan the thing that you're trying to do has changed, and the technology that's available to do it has also changed. So we need to constantly be replanning using the latest technologies and the latest ideas. And of course, you have to get buy-in from all the various stakeholders, not only the faculty and students, but also the librarians in the, the various areas that, that provide services. Data is critical to this, of course. We can't just pursue every idea that everyone has. Uh, academic libraries today are dynamic places, coming out with lots of new ideas for doing new things. We don't have the resources to pursue all of them. So we have to set priorities uh, for using our resources. And because uh, you know the entire environment changes so rapidly, at UNCG we try to set our goals, uh, concrete goals that can be established within 18 months or less. We also try to set up pilot programs and we build in right from the start an assessment component so that as we launch a program, we are committing to come back a year later and see how it's working, uh, what's working well, uh, and what isn't. Uh, if we should make a determination on whether we should continue the program or whether we need to adapt and refine it and improve it. So the process that we use is to of course, do a needs assessment first. What is it our faculty and students and the rest of our service population want and need? 
and that's again a very dynamically changing goal our student population changes over almost 100 percent every four years as people graduate and new incoming younger faculty have very different information and expectations than our older faculty so we really need to keep that going it's an ongoing process and once we know what they want us to do we need to identify goals that meet those needs um, and of course we're going to end up with far more programs and ideas than we have resources which leads to the prioritization aspect and decide which ones are most cost effective have the best cost benefit and reach the most users from there operational plans uh, how to set our how to make our goals a reality and then we launch a pilot usually on a small scale that's not always possible in some cases you do have to go wholeheartedly into a new initiative but usually you can do some smaller pilot and then evaluate that and then of course after launching to evaluate it for efficacy uh, cost benefit and usability and then it's an iterative process that's refined as necessary and there are a lot of balances that have to be considered as you move along the way uh, librarians as information professionals really want to set up systems with a lot of utility a lot of functionality a lot of features uh, but the more of that that you build into a system the more confusing it can be to a novice user so you need to balance really powerful systems versus very easy to use systems so you want both if possible and then when you look at your range of initiatives you also have to consider quantity versus quality are you going to move forward very rapidly on a whole range of fronts and launch 20 new initiatives at once or perhaps want to focus on a smaller number uh, and that's something that always needs to be considered and whatever systems you choose you want a certain degree of quantity and quality you need the balance of utility needs of use but you have to be committed as you launch them to a sustained process of usability where you're continually having users look at it give you feedback and then you improve the system based on actual user activity and based on what your users tell you you need to improve the systems and well the user feedback can come in many formats not only the actual users of the system do usability studies but also through other metrics like surveys, focus groups, and interviews. And it's there's not just one response system that's going to give you a complete picture of how users view and interact with the system. So you really need to use a, a response tools. 